My name is Jenny Tebbett and I'm from Raising Achievement. We've started recording a series of videos on, to help parents understand learning differences and difficulties in children. Last week, we looked at the characteristics of dyslexia in our younger children, and we talked about how characteristics can change over time and as they get older. Later in the primary years, we can expect to see some characteristics to progress and new ones to emerge. In the upper primary area, we're likely to see things like reverse uh, letter sequences. They'll do things like read on for no and do for don't. They'll often have difficulty learning certain letter patterns. They can have a poor visual memory for words. So when you're reading with them, you might help them work out a word. And then later the word comes up again and they can't remember it. They often start to avoid reading out loud. When they're writing, they might press too hard with their pencil and they get sore hands very quickly. Writing makes them tired. They start to dislike reading, writing and spelling and sometimes intensely. They often have difficulty learning basic facts in their times tables. They often have processing delays and everything takes them longer to complete. They may have social difficulties. Often our children uh, relate better to older students or younger students, but have trouble relating to children their own age and retaining friends. They don't get inference. They only see things in black and white and you have to say exactly what you mean. They also often don't read body language and um, facial expressions. And that also leads to some of their difficulties with social skills. In teenagers and adults, the ongoing difficulties with spelling remain. They begin to dislike reading, writing and spelling even more intensely. Uh, they often have difficulty at high school and even university with note taking and summarizing tasks. They have a poor short term and working memory and this seems to come out in all sorts of areas. They don't like change or new situations. They like to be in a situation where they know what's going to happen. They continue with those processing delays and they're often two or even several years below their chronological age in terms of achievement. They have um, frustration towards learning, which tends to increase, and they often have poor self-esteem and may even have given up on themselves as a learner altogether. The assessment for learning difficulties is undertaken by a registered specialist or a psychologist. These, assessment, these assessments are hugely beneficial. First of all, they identify a child's strengths and their weaknesses, and that allows us to design a program that meets their needs. We can use their strengths to help them become successful and help them minimize their weaknesses. The cost of specialist assessment varies. Um, in New Zealand, it can range from between $850 up to $1,500. I often meet parents who are wondering if assessments are necessary and when they should do them. They want to be sure that if they're going to spend this amount of money, that it's going to be worthwhile for them. At Raising Achievement, we offer screening assessments. These assessments identify strengths and weaknesses. They highlight the underpinning cognitive weaknesses that are impacting a student's learning. And they make recommendations for further specialist assessment, um, for support at school, and also for additional support for the child at home. These screening assessments are a fraction of the cost, and many parents find them very helpful. If you've got questions or you would like to comment on any information in the video series, please, please do so below this video, and I'll keep an eye on the chat. Next week, we'll be discussing ADHD. You probably won't be aware, but 50% of our children with learning difficulties also have ADHD. I find that this is a little known fact in education, and we will also be discussing next week why it is important to have a dual diagnosis if one is needed, um, if your child has more than one learning difference. I look forward to seeing you here next week.